Well, as a physician, I think uh, compassion is absolutely essential. It's through compassion that we uh, learn to put the values and the interests of our patients first, always. Our first responsibility as, as a physician is to our patients, and it's through compassion and understanding uh, that we're able to, to maintain that uh, priority and that focus on, on the interests of the patient. Uh, I think compassion is also very important for leaders in a similar way in that for those of us who are leaders, we need to understand the effects of policies, the effects of our environment on the people with whom we have the privilege of working. And it's through compassion that you really develop that understanding. I think we do it in a number of different ways. First, I, in my interactions with uh, Stanford students over the past uh, seven months that I've been dean, I've been very impressed by the compassionate core nature of our students. And I think that compassion manifests itself in many different ways. Our students, I've noticed, work together really well as teams. Our students are driven to projects and enterprises that bring uh, them together with others, other students, with faculty, uh, with people in the community. I've also been impressed by the engagement of our students in activities in surrounding neighborhoods and communities uh, near Stanford and indeed around the world uh, through our outreach activities both in the School of Medicine and in other areas of the university. I think it begins on how we interact with each other every day. It's really important that we value the community that we're in, and that community is a community made up of students, made up of faculty, made up of the wonderful staff that we have working here. It's really a remarkably special place, and cherishing that and cherishing, cherishing each other um, and showing that in the way we greet each other and the way we interact with each other um, is, is, I think, the first way that we build a compassionate uh, workplace and environment. And then once we've done that internally, internal to Stanford at how we treat and view each other, then to extend that out uh, to the way we relate to the rest of the world because we know that what we do here at Stanford has impact around the world. And by setting the example here and then using that uh, example in the way we interact with others uh, in, a, in, in our communities around the world, uh, we do the very best job in, in, in establishing a, a compassionate workplace and a compassionate impact on our world. I think compassion is absolutely essential to the field of medicine and as a physician compassion begins with empathy. It begins with putting yourself as a physician in the shoes of your patient and trying to understand the impact of their disease, of their social environment, on their well-being, on their attitude, um, and on their future, their outlook in life. It's through empathy that we really derive the, the basic skills and, and the core values needed to be a, a compassionate physician. Really, you can be the best technical surgeon, you can be the most brilliant clinician, scientist, researcher, and all of that's important and has impact, but what really matters to the patient, to the patient that you're treating, is how you're interacting with them, how you're bringing that knowledge and those skills to them as an individual. It means understanding and respecting who they are as an individual. Um, and that's much more than just understanding their disease or their anatomy or their physiology. It's really understanding them as a person and wanting um, to use your knowledge, your skills to help them in, in their life. Yeah, I don't know that it's any one thing. Um, I, you know, in terms of what effect my work has had and what effect I have had as a physician and as a surgeon on the lives of others, it, it really re revolves around the syndrome uh, that I described, which is an inner ear disorder caused by bone being missing over one of the balance canals in the inner ear. And I described that early in my faculty career and developed a surgical procedure to treat it. And that's had a very positive impact on the lives of, of now hundreds, thousands of, of patients. And that's been rewarding to me uh, in, in able, being able to bring that to the patients I've treated over the years. 
it's been also very rewarding to me to know that that work has impacted the lives of people I've never met, patients um, that are in other areas of the country, the world, uh, that, that I've never met. But, but I have, uh, I've heard from them, I know from others, that, that it's had an impact on them. So the, the, the compassion really came, you know, the syndrome was discovered because patients were coming to me with a constellation of symptoms and signs. And I really wanted to understand these very debilitating symptoms in the patients. I wanted to be able to have an impact uh, to help them. But it really began with understanding them and listening very carefully to them and learning from them. And I think that sense of empathy and compassion that we talked about before, being able to place you know, myself in the shoes of the patient to try to really understand and visualize and feel you know, what they're feeling and the impact that this weird syndrome which no one had understood was having on their lives. I think that's what drove me to, uh, to really work on finding the cause and then developing a cure. In terms of other compassionate acts that, that I've, I've witnessed, uh, you know, I've, I feel extraordinarily fortunate to have worked with just a stellar group of people throughout my professional career. And I've learned from hundreds of people and where I have seen compassion manifested is in so many different work environments and, and other environments. It's in the emergency department. It's in our community health clinics uh, that we here at Stanford sponsor and that other uh, institutions where I've been affiliated have sponsored. Just the people who, who, have driven, who are driven to devote their lives um, to having a positive impact on the lives of others and really that being driven by compassion has been remarkably meaningful to me. I think the first thing that means to live a compassionate life is putting others first and understanding how you can use your life to serve others and to be a benefit to others. That doesn't mean ignoring your own interests or neglecting yourself. But it means keeping it in perspective. It means having a sense of place in the world, uh, which isn't denying the importance of the individual, but realizing that we as individuals have so much more meaning in our personal lives as well as in the world in a larger sense when we are having a positive impact on others through the work we're doing, through whether that's the science we're doing, the writing we're doing, or the personal interaction that we're doing with others. I think the, the, there have been numerous writings on the work of Paul Farmer, and he's certainly a very inspirational uh, person who's had an impact on the lives of many, many people through uh, the work he's done in Haiti, through the science he's done, through the care that he's provided at a leading academic medical center. Uh, so that, that would stand out. Um, I, you know, the, um, there, most of the, the really meaningful writing, uh, both fiction and nonfiction, that I have, have read and that's influenced me have been works that deal with some aspect of compassion, where compassion manifests itself in some way. And it does, it does so in many different ways. Uh, so you find many works of fiction that, that show uh, you know, different manifestations of, of compassion. Um, you find books in technology uh, to talk about the way, I mean, for the past 25 years, technology has had an extraordinarily impactful role in enabling compassion uh, because it enables us as humans to interact and to benefit the lives of others so much more impactfully than we could have done before we had the wealth of information that's at our fingertips today. So, so I think it's a variety of different sources. I can't point to just one single uh, source.